It's time! The ATM episode number sweet 16. My name is Martin Devlin from The Platform. With me, the inimitable Mark Watson. We are talking the Black Ferns and the World Cup final this weekend. The All Blacks beat Wales. But who is the best team at the moment in the world playing rugby? This Auckland University study, that's what we'll start with, that some professors decided that more New Zealanders are engaged with the Women's World Cup final than were in the 2011 Rugby World Cup final, which absolutely stopped a whole country. We'll do the Champions League draw and the rumours that Liverpool are about to be sold or part sold. And T20, tomorrow Pakistan, plus... A really good article I thought written today on the One News website by Guy Havelt, our old workmate, about the future or not of one day cricket. Apologise to me! But Mark, we'll kick it with the Black Ferns. It's a sellout at Eden Park. And I, whether you like rugby, whether you're interested in women's rugby, that was a cracking game of sport, that semi final, wasn't it? And look, it wasn't the purest in terms of. Of there were too many mistakes, um, you know, flaky decisions, all of that kind of stuff. But that's what you get—the intensity of a semi-final and the emotion that comes with it. And Eden Park for rugby—I've been there to so many rugby tests. It's a miserable place to watch the All Blacks. It's sombre. People moan. That was rock and roll on the weekend, and I think well done. I, I absolutely applaud what I saw. Yeah, no, look, a great advertisement, and the, we, we've talked about let's just let this women's game organically grow, and that was a, a, a great advertisement for it. No politicising of it, no making it out. Let two of the three best teams in the world go toe-to-toe. New Zealand with the home advantage at Eden Park up against a nemesis who's beaten them on four previous occasions. It came down to the wire, missed penalty, and hey, we could have been talking about France-England this weekend. And so, look, it is great for women's rugby. The challenge is going to be beyond this. Yes, of course. Is maintaining that momentum and keeping people involved. It'll be really interesting in 12 months' time when the Black Ferns are playing somewhere here in New Zealand what sort of crowds they do end up getting. But that is the best advertisement. You don't need everyone telling us what we need to watch. You don't need everybody sort of blowing up how great the Haka is and whether Portia Woodman's the equivalent of Jonah Lomu. Just let the rugby do the mm-hmm. talking. And because of that game on the weekend, there is now a lot more interest in this week's final. Will I watch it? Yes, but I'll watch it because of the engagement and what I got out of Saturday, not because somebody's telling me I should watch it and not feeling like I need to be emotionally blackmailed because, um, yeah, if I don't watch it or I hadn't have watched it, I somehow, as we've alluded to, would have been sort of categorised as a bit of a yeah, male misogynist. Into a corner, yeah, yeah. And accused of all kinds of different things. Look, and you know we we uh, we uh, spoke about this yesterday on the program as 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 well, and it, and it was and look it was well pointed out. Brent Brent be the former chairman of NZR, was saying you know you go back to eighty seven. He was telling a great story. He went it was a midweek match that opened that tournament against Italy. It I was, was there. Oh, there you go. Okay, he'd gone with his old man, and he said, look, it was a bunch of supposedly amateur teams. There was a bit of brown paper bag going on, but he said you know nobody really knew what the hell the tournament was or whether it was going to take off. And then John Kerwin scores a seventy meter try, and all of a sudden it erupted. Now we've been waiting with this for the Women's World Cup. We've had a couple of close contests between teams like Wales and Scotland and that, but what we really needed was, well I'm going to say nuts on the line, ovaries on the line or whatever, but we needed something that basically had your heart in your mouth and was a showstopper like that. Now if the Black Ferns had a loss and it was a kick in the end and a couple of decisions, sure we wouldn't be talking like this, but that was the... It still would have been a great game of rugby. It would have been a great game of rugby but that was the perfect fillip for the tournament. Not just for now, but in the future as well. Because all of a sudden you actually saw a game of sport which was a cracking game of sport to watch. And look the whole thing about, I don't care what it is, T20 whether it's football, round ball, rugby, tennis whatever it is, you want an even contest between a couple of teams where you don't know what the result is going to be and if you've got some emotional connection to it as well like you're watching a New Zealand team play naturally you're leaning Mm. towards that I thought it had absolutely everything and the sound coming out of my television from Eden Park was as glorious as I've ever heard it Uh, yeah the the other thing that sort of I I guess sort of annoys me with the politicising of what we've seen with this Women's Rugby World Cup there's always there's this big thing hey we've got to put women's sport on the forefront and women are as good as men and I'll go yeah but hang on a minute this is the same media who for years have never given the likes of the Erin Bakers the Swindells uh, I'm only going to use you know all of our different runners over the years that have done great things have been, been competing on the highest stage in truly global sports forever this is not new we've always had success in women's sport and I would imagine that a lot of those 
those individual athletes from yesteryear, are those that are playing squash, some of our tennis players from the past, are probably sitting there going, hey, hang on a minute, how come these girls are suddenly getting all of this yeah, coverage yeah, yeah. and made yeah. out to be superstars when we have been genuine superstars? We've been applying our trade on the biggest stage forever and we've got nothing. So there'll be the sort of celebration that women's sports getting on the front pages, but I'd imagine the women's hockey team and various other Football women's team, sides over the Kiwi years will be really, really England. frustrated that once again, how come it's rugby that's hijacking us? How come that's these girls point. are suddenly being put up on a pedestal when really the majority of them probably couldn't actually live in the world of um, yeah, uh, Joel well, King or some of these Barbara other type Kendall. of athletes, your Barbara Kendalls. I even go back Williams. to a runner by the name of Kimberly Smith. Now, Kimberly didn't necessarily do anything at, at the Olympic level, but you go and have a look at her times. You go and have a look at the national records she get. You go and have a look at what she did at New York Marathon. Remarkable athlete. People go, Kimberly who? But then I'm, you know, at the same time, I sort of sit well, there did and Dame go, Valerie it, it, ever capture a nation like this around gold medal performances at the this Olympics? Is, this yes. is the double standard of the of of, oh, of the, the media. sports media in this you, country you, for sure. It, it's it's in, you all want this parity, you all want this equality, but you're not prepared to give it unless you think it's commercially there viable. Yeah. And it's like Television New Zealand and all these virtue signalling stations that stand up and talk about equality and talk about breaking it down. Yet when it comes to the Paralympic Games, we'll go and put that on Duke Television. We won't give it the wall no, 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 coverage oh, no, that no, the no. Olympics get. <laughs> no, 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 and no, it's no, just no. this constant double standard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And it's virtue signalling. They don't actually believe a word of no, what I, they this say. Is, and look, the most frustrating one for me is News Hub, who, I mean, look, and I know a lot of the young journalists that are working there. And look, I, I feel for them the fact that they must have these absolute knob in hand editors who are telling them what to write, what language to use, the the puffery, the the over hysterical nature of their reporting, and I get the fact that they've got this tournament and it's free to air, and so therefore they're on the hype train. But look, to me, it's off putting, is what it is. And I'll go to look, the latest story out of News Hub, and oh. this is and look, and I know the young woman that wrote this, and I feel for her because obviously she's been told to write this article. A, an Auckland University study, some professor called Tony Lee, and I'm not being belittling by saying that, but I don't know who this professor is. And when you listen to what she's saying, she says that more New Zealanders are now invested in the Black Ferns final oh. than in the All Blacks final in 2011. Rubbish. Now, please, show me. Who are you interviewing? Over how long? What demographics were they? What planet do they live on? Because that's just absolute yeah. and, lies. And where, and where does she is. sit politically? I guarantee where she's. In, I guarantee she sits in the social sciences or the humanities, who have just inundated universities. Universities no longer a place to challenge. Universities is just a safe haven these days for those who don't want to be offended. What absolute rubbish! It's, it's, it's if the Black lot, Ferns mate. lose on Sunday morning, a nation's not going to mourn. They're not going to be disappointed. The government's we're not going to get voted going, out. We're are not they? going to be having a discussion on whether Wayne. Smith should stay on that's in his no, job no, or not. No, I mean, not. I've got to say, and you're not allowed to criticise this tournament because, again, you know, the event, you're a woman the event director do, yeah. the event director and staff happens to be a woman. But I drive around Auckland, you wouldn't even know there is a Women's Rugby World Cup on. No, there there's is no a, bunting, there's, there's, no, no there's signs, nothing there's around, nothing, there's, there's no, no signage. No. You know, when we had the 2011 World Cup, you were down there at the Viaduct. Uh -huh. There was a hub of activity. Yeah, I was, was broadcasting a radio station there. This place was pumping. The bars were full. Yeah. I, I mean, you're hey, selling out... But it covered everything. Look, I presented that 2011 Rugby World Cup, and I'm not painting myself really on, on TV1. I'm only saying this because TV3 had the coverage. Māori TV, MTS had the coverage. Sky TV had the coverage. There were four separate broadcasters, Mark. You know, uh, the TV3 are trumpeting, and well they should that 900,000 yeah. viewers watched that match on the weekend. But this was watched by millions. The party went from the Sky Tower to the waterfront. Yeah. That night of that final, you couldn't walk in Auckland. The, the roads were full of people. Plus, it was a nationwide tournament from Whangarei to Invercargill, not from Whangarei to Auckland. And you, you knew the moment you arrived in this country, the moment you drove around, there was a World Cup on. But it's a bit like this. And if you go to people on the street and go, oh, this Women's World Cup, you know, it's bigger than 2011. People are not, people can't go back and remember 2011. It's like coming up to someone, say, three years ago and going, Kieran Reid would be in your greatest 15 at eight, wouldn't he? And people, and, and you know, just, let's just say yeah, that he's point. just scored three tries. And you go, yeah, he would. And then you go, yeah, but hang on a minute. What about Murray Mixted? So Brian what, about, what about, what about, Zin, Buck what about, 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 what
Oh, yeah, but in that moment, that person's already sort of ticked those they, they boxes tick those on boxes, that little it. survey, yeah, yeah. and it is completely, completely it's misconstrued. It's nonsense, it's people, rubbish. is what it is. And it's, it's, again, this is what is doing the game a disservice. I totally agree it's you. shoving, shoving this propaganda down our throat, and no one dares challenge it, no one dares ask the questions, and it's actually an indictment. It's actually doing the game a disservice. damage totally and a disservice. I totally I look, I'm absolutely with this. How many games, I think it, I think it how many games, it is patronising how many games, games has the professor been to? Where will this professor be on Saturday night? Well, she'll Is be it appointment her viewing? Study, noting this figure and doing this percentage. And look, it's just all of these people, all of these surveys, all of these studies, having worked in this business for a hell of a long time, this is how it works. You commission research that you already know the answer you want. And so, therefore, the questions are weighted to getting the answer that yeah. you need. That's but, how it actually works. This, But the fact that News Hub will publish a story like this, publish it on their news site like it's actually news. I implore this organisation. You have the ability to be the best single sports website in the country by far, if you want to be that. Put a, put a website out that does factual sports news. Put one next to it that is opinion. Stop trying to put your opinion on a news page because it's not news and it's not fact. And this is absolute utter nonsense. Look, and, and, and you know, you're probably listening there thinking, why are you guys even talking about it? What difference does it make? It makes a difference it's because it's got to be called out. It's got to be called out. Because the one thing that, you know, at the end of this Women's World Cup, you've got this huge big balloon at the moment, and it's there's going to be a prick in it. The air's going to go out of it. And then what? Let's not forget, the Farah Palmer Cup was attended by no one. Super Rugby Opiki was attended by no one. Those viewing figures oh. have never been released. I right? was, and I was, and it's really important that they do because it's not about just the fans through the gate. Who is watching it on the TV? And I go back to your your, your first point, Mark, which is very good. It's simply that. The next stage is the hardest stage. Once you've got the euphoria of a world championship and, you know, national celebrities and identities and a packed Eden Park, once that all dies and subsides a little, what next? Well, and then you're relying on the rugby union, those bozos down in Wellington, to come up with a marketing plan, to come up with an action plan, to actually have something fundamental in place to capitalise on this. And I believe just like New Zealand football, just like New Zealand hockey, so many sports, just like the cycling, they won't be able to. No, again, I was going to mention 76 with the hockey, 82 with the All Whites. There was some good momentum. Couldn't even really, really move on from it. Couldn't maintain 2010, that. 2010, the couldn't, football yeah, couldn't. Couldn't maintain that absolute momentum. But I, I, look, I was talking to somebody quite high up in senior club rugby here who's heavily involved with one of the super franchises. And he said, look, and we were just talking about the overall landscape of rugby, a lot of what we've discussed. And he said, I completely agree talking about club rugby. But he actually said to me, Women's rugby's in trouble. Women's rugby's not as healthy as they make it out. If you actually go behind the scenes, ask how many senior club rugby sides in Auckland actually have a women's team. And so therefore, you start to even look at that and go, so really, what is the quality like? How much depth is there below this? How big is this game actually? Where I go along on a Saturday, I've seen how many young girls are playing soccer, how many young girls are playing football, how big it is at a grassroots base. But... They've got the media hook line They've and sinker now. Have, yeah. Whatever yeah. happens with the All Blacks, probably what's been happening a little bit with New Zealand soccer, they're just going to continue to sell this. They're going to continue to pat each other on the back. They're going to continue to just do this whole virtue signaling rubbish and get away with blue bloody murder with no, the media not. that no, they no. own this and the media the that will and not this challenge why, them. This is why it's important that you have to challenge this narrative. One more uh, point on this. When they said uh, 900,000 people were watching Free to Wear, and we've been saying this the whole tournament, that giving it to Spark World Rugby or whoever was involved in that was a massive mistake. We all know that. If you'd put it on Free to Wear, they would have got hundreds of thousands watching even the pool well, matches. I mean, because that's what Free to Wear sport is. Because most people in this country at the moment, most people can't afford well, the dollars that it costs to pay for subscriptions television. They no. can't. They will watch it if you put it on TV and it's free to wear. But the but the point, the second point they made was that it was almost double the ratings of the All Blacks versus the Australia in the second Bledisloe Cup test. And my question to that is where did you get that information? Because well, Sky, Sky have do never not released, released their figures. They've never released those figures. So how on earth can a competitor like TV3 get those figures out of Sky when no one else can? You've, 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 you've pulled a rabbit out of the hat if that's the case. Plus, also, I don't believe it because the thing with the Sky figures, subscription television for a start, you're not, you're not counting on the people that also watch it at someone else's house, watch it in a pub. But it's irrelevant. You aren't bigger as oh, a look. sport than the men's version of the game. And stop telling us it is when it's not and we all bloody know it's not. Agree.
That's it. And you've got to deal in the world. You've, you've only got to go and ask people at the local cafe and go and ask your mates. You can do your own survey pretty damn quickly, Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, mate. Apologise to me! Let's oh, talk about hey, the All Blacks. Can I just touch on the All Blacks? Go Firstly, on. look, good good performance from I didn't see it coming. Um, I didn't see it coming. Um, and I think, and we've already discussed this, I think Wales sort of allowed the All Blacks to maybe play yeah, that play way. well, yes. But they, so did they, they really didn't have any ball runners. And they gave us that metre of space in front of us which you get Ireland in Super don't. Rugby. Which Ireland won't, which South Africa don't, which the French probably won't. They let us play is what they yeah. did. But, but, but what, we did play well. But yeah, but look, my concern now is I've been hearing these rumblings, are we going to change this team for Scotland? I'm sick of changing this team for Scotland. We've got to wrap our players in more cotton wool. No, what you should be doing now is in a year's time, we've got to win a quarterfinal a semi-final, semi-final and a final. final. So now back you practice That's it. a year out exactly what you need exactly to do in a year's time. Totally. You get your group of 23 players yep. bar injury and you say, you. right, you've I'm won the you. quarterfinal against Wales. Yeah. Now, do you have the mental fortitude to be able to get up and do it again against a Scottish team and then six days later be able to turn around and do it in England? You just replicate what's going to happen Absolutely. next year yeah. and if if and if you come up totally. short you come up short but you take well, the you lessons can, from yeah, it, it and then you make the adjustments but yeah. this constant rest and rotation how do we know and we haven't seen it all year whether this core group of players can put three good performances back to back we week in, week out, to. because we've never given the no, chance we haven't or haven't been, been, able, been to. able to. All we've done is Jekyll and Hyde the whole and, time. And we had I just a crap game against the Japan. mentality. We beat Wales. So now we go against Scotland. For a start, the loose forwards, you're sitting there thinking, OK, uh, there's no Sam Kane, so you've got your Frizzell. We're a better team without Sam Kane, by okay, the way. You've got your Frizzell, you've got your Dalton, you've got your Artie. Play these guys three tests in a goddamn row. Play them three tests yeah. in a row. And knowing play the same n- halfback and first fight, play the same midfield combination. No, and knowing next year you've got Ethan Blackadder, who I think we've missed terribly this year back. And so you've got it. You know, possibly next year you're going to have Anton Leonard Brown at his very best. You know, Goodyear's going to be somewhere in the background. You've got some players coming in. But boy, get our combinations established. And by the way, Rico Awani is a winger. I do just want to say I think there is some merit, and I'm happy to eat a bit of humble pie. I think there is some merit. With growing up and playing with your brothers in the backyard in Taranaki, oh, I, thought, I thought Scott Barrett was he excellent. He was magnificent, wasn't he? And what he does is, and, and the fact that he can play both number six and also lock and play them out with but such... which one? Stick to one. Well, the injuries have meant that he's had to swap around, hasn't he? So I mean, He's not a least, six, he's a lock. At least cut my man Foss okay, some slack. Let's at move. least cut my man Foss some slack on that. No, what I will say is, if we beat Scotland and if we beat England, what we have now seen, what we have seen... It is now Joe Schmidt's team. If we are still, is it Joe Schmidt's team and Jason Ryan's team yet, or is it still Ian Foster's All Blacks against Japan? I think it was still Ian Foster's All Blacks. Oh, thank I, God it, Almighty! I mean, no, 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 you, credit, no mate. you're going to sack your two assistant coaches yeah, because, when things are going terribly yeah, wrong, that's right. and so you're going to blame them. So when the team goes right and you bring two new assistant coaches in, surely if you're consistent, Martin, you give the credit okay. to the two assistant. Who is the coaches. best rugby team in the world right now? I genuinely think that this is the first World Cup that I've seen. I genuinely think that. I don't know who the best team in the world is. Well, the All Blacks go to every World Cup. And we always think that they're the best. That we aren't the best in the world. We we do know that. I would say at the moment it's Ireland and France would be the two best teams. That Irish performance against South Africa. I've been reading so many reports moaning about they weren't doing this, they didn't do that in South Africa. And the referees, listen, they won a hard ass Test match playing exactly like the Yarpies do. They suffocated the game. They scored more points. Good night. That's how you win a World Cup. I'd put them at one. Australia, should they have beaten France? They didn't. Dave Rennie, your whole career with Australia is you should have won a test match and you didn't, mate. But the, 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 so the result over the weekend that got me is... So you're telling me Ian Foster's a better coach than Dave Rennie? That was a little dig at Dave Rennie. That was a little dig at Dave Rennie. But you, 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 you have your Fossey t-shirt Dave, on. Dave Rennie gets no criticism. He's Magic Dave. Well, come He's on, Magic Dave. He's got nothing to work with. He's got nothing to work with. Neither Ian Foster, mate. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to... You don't believe a let, word of that. <laughs> Apologise to me. Let us go back to Argentina beating England at Twickenham. How the hell? I mean, so every time Argentina do this, we sit there and we go, oh, oh, really? Argentina beat us in Christchurch. Argentina beat us over in Sydney, okay? They aren't this team now that just makes the quarterfinals. They are a dangerous team. Who is the best in the world in men's rugby right now? Oh, I'm going to go with France because I think they've won 11 in a row and they're actually the Six Nations champions. And I think based on that, and then you go Ireland at number two. And then I think below that, it's a bit of a coin toss. I don't think we're three. Well, we could be. I don't think we're three. Us in Africa? I don't think we're three. I think you'd probably... 
Yeah, South Africa, I think Argentina are probably somewhere in the discussion now. England are probably still in the discussion. Yeah, you can't just write them no, off no, no, because no. they drop no. a test to Argentina. No. no. Um, early season for both those teams, remember, internationally. Yep. And we always use it. Ian Foster's great on using that excuse. Oh, it's early in the season. Oh, it's early in the season. Hey, right. I mean, Dave when he Rennie, wins Dave the World Rennie. Cup, when he's holding the World Cup up. Do you we'll... honestly think we're going to win the Rugby World no, Cup, I Martin? I, 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 look, oh, oh, I oh. hope. I hope. Yeah. But, I mean, hope is the biggest killer in sport, isn't it? Let us talk T20 cricket. The one team we didn't want in the semi-finals was Pakistan at the T20 World I still Cup, have it? nightmares of Inza Mamalhat at Eden you Park did. in 92. Mark, was, I was, was there. I was, was in the terraces. It was a one-day World Crow Cup. scored 100. Even, t- he, he got 91, as a matter of fact, before he retired. If you look at Crow scored 100 in that No, he had scored 100 against Australia in the opening match. And in that semi-final. Look it up, Lachlan. Tell me that Martin Crow got 91 in 1992 before he went off with his hamstring injury. The bionic potato waddled out there. Didn't even want to play as a 19-year-old, apparently. Jarvid was the only batsman they had left. And he just smacked Harris all over yeah. Eden Park and broke her heart. Look at that. Turn around, Watto, and see the thumbs up. Did, if you're going to bring a stack to the table, bring it hard. Apologise to me, Watto. <laughs> Apologise to me. Sorry, Martin. Are we going to beat Pakistan? I'll tell you what, they lost their first two games in, that, in this tournament, and I thought, Yahoo, they're out. And yeah. now, it, all of a sudden, they're back. Yeah, it, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think a lot will come down to the toss. It's how positively we play. Um, do you, you know, if we lose for now and early, do you bring our captain out, Kane Williamson, or do you move that batting order around just a little bit and maybe bring in a little bit more of a heavy hitter at first drop rather than Well, do we even Williamson? bat first? Do you want to bat first against them? I mean, I think we've got a, I think we've got a bowling attack that can be very, very effective. We've got to believe in it, don't we? We do have to believe in it. I mean, you're going to hope that Pakistan, like they have for the last 20-odd years, is match-fixing. And <laughs> it's not in their best interest to win this game, Martin. Um, so but we're allowed to be a little bit cynical, aren't we? Well, we course we're we allowed are. to be a little bit we're cynical. Little I mean, bit. we've had some individuals guilty or associated with it, but it's been not at an international level. It's been sort of more... On the well, side, they've had more of these amazing what results. Well, go and ask Craig tournament. McMillan. When did Craig McMillan score that hundred? I think Pakistan here about ninety nine in Christchurch. They couldn't have bowled the guy more no balls and more sort of. It? And there was the horsey guy from Hamilton. Remember, he got one as well. There was a couple of New Zealand Rutherford. No, it wasn't him. It was um. Oh God, I actually do remember this Test match. Brian Young got a century, and somebody else got a set. There, it was just like what the. Oh, I remember them playing though in Australia, and a Test match was there for the taking. And the throws were coming in over the stumps and the wicketkeeper was dropping them. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But you're allowed to be a little bit cynical. But look, uh, I'll ask you this, Martin. It's an interesting one. Um, Rugby League World Cup, Women's Cricket World Cup, Men's T20 Cricket World Cup. I'm not going to include the Women's Rugby League in it because it's just such a sham that it's not even worth mentioning. Which one would you rather win most? See, I'd like to win the Rugby League World Cup more than the other two. If I had to choose one, I'd go with the Rugby League World Cup because to do it, we've got to beat Australia in yeah, a well, sport they love. Yeah, we've got to beat Australia in a Plus, also, I suppose, you know, in terms of the... And T20 team... cricket is fickle. Prior yeah. to Australia winning it, beating us, yeah. do we actually remember the West Indies winning the two previous no, ones? You see, look, and, and I'd actually forgotten that last year we even played in the final. So, look, I mean, I, my association with the Kiwis goes back a hell of a lot longer than mm. T20 cricket does. I mean, I go back to when Graham Lowe was in charge in 83 and 85 and we were beating mm. the Australians for the first time mm. in decades. And so, no, I'd probably go for that as well. Is there a future for one day cricket finally? Because Guy Havelt wrote a great article uh, today on One News, I thought. And it's just every four years you have that one day cricket World Cup. The great thing about this... That's t- the only format you can... you still got to have a one day cricket World Cup format. I think it's a nice balance between the T20 game but when and you test play cricket. These games in the well, no, but that's it. But uh, there's a danger too, though, that too much T20 cricket's going to make it well, irrelevant too. Look, there's no legacy in winning the T20 game, is there? I think if you're going to... Oh, I agree. Can, can the game sustain three forms? I'm not sure. But T20 cricket, it's just had no meaning. It's always been the either pre-test warm-up or the post-test series. The franchise stuff so you've got to start cold, placing some emphasis it. on it. How do we make this relevant? How do we put some emphasis on well, these games? I don't think games? it is relevant. I, think the world... I mean, look at the Chapel Hadley. What a great opportunity oh, between two just, great nations. Absolute that, disaster. I mean, well, now, disaster. Absolutely disaster. Players couldn't give a stuff no, about it. I'm not going to argue about that. I just think cricket in general is in trouble because T20 cricket out of the side of the World Cup, there's so much of it now. It's hit and well, giggle. No one cares about the no franchise one cares. stuff. Unless you actually live in those cities. No player goes down in history for what they did in T20 cricket. They don't. No player really has ever gone down in history for what they've done in one day cricket. And test match cricket, you, you, me, that's still where it's at. But again, how do you reinvent that? How do we get excited about oh, who's coming down for two tests in a 
series. I didn't know a series was two tests. In February, when Pakistan come down to Sri Lanka, nobody does. So I actually think cricket as a whole is in trouble. T20 cricket, yes, it's going to bring some income in. Yes, it's going to provide a form of entertainment. But the serious nature of the game, the serious nature of the game, the relevance, the legacy side of it <clears throat> is starting to diminish. Apologise to me! Finally then, let's talk about is Sonny Bill Williams now as his quest to become the heavyweight champion of the world over, is it? God, you're nasty. What is wrong with Sonny Bill Williams? Good on him for getting out there and trying to chase his boxing and make some money. Oh, please, Come on, mate. mate. It's, a, it's like Mayweather fighting the opponents he fights. Look, Mark Hunt I've got massive respect for because he won the K1 kickboxing title a couple of decades Watson ago. Ryder. Well, actually, okay, you're Watson fought Jesse Ryder, of course, in the fight for life. I do actually remember that. But when I saw Sonny Bill Williams with his hands beside his side, no defence at all, just getting clocked on the chin like that, and his mouth gum came, came spitting out, I thought, dude, please can stop we, can this we just talk about, Can we just quickly talk about the Champions League? Liverpool have got their arch nemesis, Real Madrid. Madrid. And then the, the other side 16. of the draw, United got Barcelona. Oh, that's not that's the other side. That's your wafer league. You know where sorry, Barcelona. You, sorry, you all know where Barcelona. Sorry. But isn't it funny how you have got mighty Barcelona, mighty Manchester United, who only 10, 12 years ago, fifteen we're years ago, tour, were winning it? everything, and now they're playing in a in a, a do oh, or die one off game. I'm not even in the UEFA in the UEFA Championship, no, mind you. We could also see Bayern Munich, Paris Saint Germain. One of the two big clubs is also going to exit. So of four of the big big names. And the Champions League top 16, two are going to go after this round. See you in the Europa League, and I look forward to it. We're not going to be in the Europa League, Martin. Devlin. Tomorrow! And Queen's Park Rangers have won it! The Platform.